I know. <laughs> Here's what I do know. So I was getting ready tonight, and the Holy Spirit spoke something to me. And he said this to me, and I want you to listen. And uh, those of you that are watching uh, in our great country, he said to me, too many people, his people, are living in right now, you ask the state of the country, too many right now are living in the, I sure hope so. That's right. That's right. And it's grieved the Spirit of God. And he said, tell them they are to stand in a position of authority now as his voice in faith that declares it shall be so. It shall be so. America is being saved. It shall be so. Yeah. Amen. And God's man will rule in the land. That's right. All right. We're going to get things started. Pastor Hank, you're the father of the house. Would you please pray over Flashpoint tonight and this whole weekend? All right. Heavenly Father, we honor you. And this is the time that we have gathered with you, the Almighty God, before the court of heaven. And Father, you have spoken not only in your holy word, but you have spoken by your holy servants. And you, Father, have heard the cries and the sound from your people, your remnant, who cry night and day to avenge us speedily from our adversaries. This is your country. But Father, we are your people. And we are crying out for those who have been murdered in the womb that never got a chance to walk upon the very soil of this country. We are crying out for the children, Lord God, and how they have been treated and sexually exploited and trafficked. And you said, God, remember the children. So we stand before you and we dedicate this conference to your honor, to your glory. Now speak to us, speak through us, and speak for us. And I pray, Father, that something will happen. It is time for you to act, that as you come, something will shift over this country, that men will know that you did it, God, and we'll stand and see the salvation of our God. Bless this time now, we pray, in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Give you a chance to comment. Um, you know, I hope this makes sense. I feel like my responsibility writing these posts every day to give him 15 for those of you that are aware. I feel like a part of my responsibility is, is to stay a little bit disconnected from what's happening in the natural realm sure. so that I can keep people pulled back to what is God saying here. So. I'm not, I'm not even implying that, that this should be what others did, but I didn't watch the debate. I spent the time in prayer because I didn't want to be influenced if he did a good job or if he didn't do a good job. I, want, I just wanted to be able to write the next day's post and say, here's what God is saying. And so I just, you know, I heard, a, I heard a great mess, one of the greatest messages I've ever heard, and I don't even remember who did it. <laughs> but. It, it was about the favor of the Lord. It was one of these preaching things. You don't need money. You need favor. You don't need this. You need favor. And it was the, the point was when you have God's favor, it doesn't matter what circumstance you find yourself in, His favor brings you what you need. And I feel like God's favor is on this man. And you know, he's, he's going, that, that's just what I feel. I know that'll drive the liberals crazy to say God's favorite. Song. But I feel like God is, you know, we say America shall be saved. When we say America shall be saved, as important as we know elections are, right. and we know how important they are, but we're not talking about Trump when we say America shall be saved. We're talking about God's going to come through come and he's going to use this man. Yeah. So my position is still America's going to be saved. And I believe this election is a part of it. And I don't care what the enemy did or didn't do in that debate, I still felt the favor of the Lord when it was over on Donald Trump. Amen. Pastor Nick, that was a great answer. You know, and just hear me out. I think Kamala Harris clearly won the debate. If you base it on lies, lack of fact-checking, 
three against one, right? I think an ugliness. I think she uh, clearly, clearly, clearly won. I think that her opponent was better looking. But I think if you look at it from what America wanted, they were looking for truth. President Trump won. He won the overall debate based on he stayed with the truth. He spoke policies. She didn't. Right. He also, what I thought did really well, he was a statesman. She wasn't. She had that mocking, you know, and, and, and too bad it wasn't a UFC fight and some woman went up and smacked her, you know, because um, she really needed that smirk off of her face. But remember what, what uh, Bernie Sanders said. Okay, do you remember? You gotta go back. She's absolutely vacated all of her Marxist communist policies, okay? That's what he said. And you never heard it. That was supposed to be. That's pretty good. Listen, thank Give you. Him a Listen, hand. I think it's terrific. Good, Listen, yeah. Gene, thank you. Listen, I mean, these people are so evil. They're just so evil. But, but here's the point the point is, you never heard. And he'll literally be here all week. Just, yes. uh, just, uh, yeah. Literally, yeah. Rick, I can imitate you too, so beware. But here, <laughs> here, here, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm going to wrap this up. Here's the deal. You didn't hear any policy. And don't forget, those of you that are watching and you're on the fence, she didn't get any votes. So it tells you the danger of someone like her, who you the people don't have a voice or a vote. But you know what? Open your spiritual eyes and you're going to see that God's got this figured out and there are more on our side than against Amen. us. That's good. All right, so that's exactly right, Pastor Hank, but I'm going to show you something you can look at your physical eyes. Look at, again, I, I have said CNN more tonight than most not. Uh, look at this instant poll from the first, this is right after the Trump-Harris debate. Look at the ch difference uh, in this poll. Go ahead, guys, put it up there. Who would better handle the economy? Survey says... Kamala Harris, 37% before debate, 35. Look at Trump, he went up from 53 to 55. Wow. I mean, Those were people that watched the debate. That's how they felt like they had. That's awesome. Now, so all of you, they're like, it didn't go my way. It's okay. In fact, I wanna show you something. All right, so let me show you this. This is a, uh, this is a video. This is where they had, Fox News had a live uh, tracking where they had Democrats, independents, and Republicans in a room. And they tracked as they went down, the, as the debate went on, they had a device where they could, if they were agreeing with something, they would turn it, or if they were not agreeing. And so let me show you in real time. Now look at this thing. There's red, there's blue, and there's yellow. The yellow line are the independents. They're the people that everybody is wanting to get. It's that 11% in the middle that no one they haven't declared who they're for. So uh, let me show you this clip real quick. Play it. Record illegal immigration under the Biden-Harris administration and the migrant crime, also a big issue, which he brought up many times, and it's a big issue for voters. Here is the former president on that. Criminals off the street, and they've given them to her to put into our country. And this will be one of the greatest mistakes in history for them to allow. And I think they probably did it because they think they're going to get votes, but it's not worth it because they're, they're destroying the fabric of our country by what they've done. There's never been anything done like this at all. They've destroyed the fabric of our country. Millions of people let in. And all over the world, crime is down all over the world except here. Crime here is up and through the roof. Despite their fraudulent statements that they made, crime in this country is through the roof. And we have a new form of crime. It's called migrant crime. And it's happening at levels that nobody thought possible. President Right. You can't miss it. I mean, at one point, those lines stopped going together and independents started going up a little bit higher than Republicans. I mean, they were right up. What is going on with independents? And we better pay a lot of attention to them. We better. And I'll tell you, it's really interesting because in 2020, we didn't see this. We saw a big split between independents, Republicans, Democrats. It was like, mm. you know, 
all, all different. It was like spaghetti lines. What we're seeing now is very much like we saw in 2016, which is independents are tracking very much with Republicans. They're looking for a couple things. They're looking for answers on immigration. They're looking for answers on the economy. They want to hear that things are going to get better for them. And they also want change from what's happening right now. All right. You saw everybody see the yellow line? You watch that go, as he was saying? Uh, so speak to that, Pastor. She Shannon. asked a question. What is going on with independence? Let me respond. No joke. God is opening up the eyes of the independents in America to recognize that her campaign is completely a facade. It's a pivot. She, her lies, her deceptive mechanism, her rhetoric, and a matter of fact, how in the world do you think these independents are pivoting more and more? Do you realize that every American is cognizant of the fact that somewhere between 15 and 20 million individuals have entered into our nation illegally? We are aware of that. Not everyone is speaking about it because they're going to call you a nativist and racist. But when they vote on November 5, they're going in, they're going, absolutely not. We are a nation of laws. If you want to come into this country, you have to come here legally and you have to respect the laws that undergird this nation. Absolutely. That's the pushback on the 5th of November. And that is why she will not occupy the White House. Yeah, I think. And, and the reason they know is because the, the media control of the narrative has been broken. We live in a time where, thank you, Elon Musk and others that have allowed for that free speech to still take place, we can get the news out there. And that's why over the next two months, it's so important for you to be force multipliers. You have to take the good news and the truth and make sure your friends and family hear it. The reason the Orwellian Ministry of Truth is not working for them is because while they do control the narrative with a chunk of the American public that is normally just watching MSNBC or ABC or whatever, they do have them fooled. But those independents that you saw, saw that shooting up, they're seeing on social media both sides. And so they know that she's absolutely lying when she says the things that you just watched her say or what you watched in the, in the debate, and they understand why he is angry. That group knows why, because they're hearing the truth from us. That's why Flashpoint's important. That's why your, just your clicks of sharing those clips is so, so vital because What's your so thoughts? You know, I, I'm back to Genesis 1. Because <laughs> it starts with God saying the earth was without form and void. You, that, that's, without form is one Hebrew word, void is another. You, could, you can boil them both down to chaos. Barrenness and chaos. It could be disorder, it could be... Uh, sterility, it's like a desert, but it's, it's just, but it also, they also mean chaos. So how does God deal with chaos? So then he says, and when I talked about earlier, his voice, let there be, and Holy Spirit. But here's, here's what I found recently, just from reading the message translation. Let there be, and there was, those two phrases both come from the word Yahweh. Let there be comes from Yah, and and there was comes from way, the last half. And they make the point that what God is doing immediately is inserting himself into the chaos. Yes, yes. It's, and I'm not trying to be dramatic, this is, this is what he did. It's as though he stood up and said, me be. Oh. I am inserted himself into it. Now, you come to the New Testament, and this, I want, I, I'll do this fast. Five times in, in the book, in John chapter 1, he uses the, the Greek word for create. Talking about God creating all that we see through the word. He, he creates John the Baptist. Uh, four of those times it talks about creation as in let there be. The other time, it's creating John the Baptist, genomai. But then you come to the Lord's Prayer, and they you know, teach us to pray, and he says, do it this way. And we all know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Most of us here know that those are commands in the Greek tense, not requests. He's not, he's saying, request me for this and this and this, but when he says kingdom come, he's saying, I want you to command my kingdom or my authority, my rule in the situations. And then he says, and command my will to be. And he uses this word again, genomai. So he uses the very same word 
telling us to command his will as he used to say, I create, this is what I did when I created the heavens and the earth. He says, in other words, that voice in the beginning that inserted me into the chaos, you're going to become that voice for me. You're going to speak my words. And it doesn't have to be some sp super spiritual thing where one of us stands up and says, yeah, you know, let there be, let there be. We are doing it now. That's right. He Good. just declared the word of the Lord. He declared the word of the Lord. He declared the word of the Lord. We're doing it. And if we stand and do that, it literally releases the creative power of Yahweh into the earth to bring forth what he is saying. We say it. Holy Spirit hovers. This is what's coming, Jay. Even to California. Even to California. <laughs> You know, Pastor Hank, I, I want to say this. Before, I know you. I know you've got a word. Um, the uh, if there's one thing I've seen over the past three and a half, four years that we've been doing that. Um, in fact, it's this week. It's four years. We started our first show. Wow! So, yeah. That's awesome. So, in, in light of that, though, Pastor Hank. You, I, I've, I've understood one thing. The longer we do it, the more I understand how few pastors there are like Hank and Brenda Kuhneman. So, now, and, and here's what I mean. Pastor Hank, by this, is it your willingness to stand? Yes. Your willingness to give the prophetic word when God tells you yes. But here's, here's what blesses me, and I believe it blesses everybody in the room and those watching on television. I've never heard you back down. No, you, you haven't. You haven't heard him back down, and I've never heard you apologize for the word of the Lord when he gave it to you. I've never seen you sign a document or say something that was contrary to the word that God gave you. And we, uh, and I'm not saying there's not any other pastors in America. Obviously, there are wonderful pastors out there, but I'm telling you, there are very few that stand above the rest, and I just want to say... Uh, on behalf of the Flashpoint Army, thank you. Amen. Thank you. I know you have a word. Thank you. You, you touched my heart. Um, I just want to say, if I can follow up on that, but I just want to show you, Dutch, my opening text for tomorrow night. If you can look at it, if you could read that to the people. This one? Uh, right there. Oh, Genesis 1, 1 to 4. <laughs> yeah. So that's what God said to me. Yeah, and the name of my message is <clears throat> the condition, the countering, and the remnant. And every time that there is a condition that is negative, God just looks for someone to counter it. And uh, if you, and it doesn't have to be the masses. That's that's what when people says America needs to repent. Sure, we all need to repent, and we need to keep a repentive heart. But Pastor Gene, the reason you know you said such kind words, and thank you people for being so gracious to Brenda and I. It's because of God and you. But this 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 isn't about elections for me. This, this is about stewarding, stewarding over the greatest responsibility in the earth, and that is the heart of God. And when God reveals something and he reveals his heart, you're to steward over it, and it, and it becomes very sacred to me where I never want to grieve him. I don't want to make things up. You know, people will call you false this and false that. Look, I, I don't want God's heart to ever be misrepresented. And so I go back to 9-11, your wife's birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday, Terry. But 9-11, we, we, we so easily forget. And God spoke, our church. How many of you were there that night? You, you were there. And the Spirit of God began to prophesy. And, I, and I, could, I didn't even believe the words coming from these lips. And he said, America, you've been wounded in the place of New York. But from the place of New York, I will raise up a president who was born and raised there, says the living God. And for each of the towers that fell, I shall give him a term, says the Spirit of God. 
And you will go to war, and you'll go to war with Iraq, Afghanistan, but it won't be right. But what would be right is this one that will be a mystery that I will raise up. Okay, so this was documented. We held on to the word of the Lord. It didn't make any sense to us. Who is this mystery from New York? All of a sudden, about 2006, 2007, I get a call from Kim Clement. And he says, hey, I've been listening to what you've been prophesying. And he says, I want to meet with you. And he goes, I want to meet with some government officials with you, Hank. He said, you're hearing from God. I step in the room, and he comes in. He's got long hair. He's got, he looks like, you know, one of the prophets of old. I'm wearing a suit. And he stops, and his mouth drops open, and he says, I'm glad I met you because why is it when I look at you, I see me? Now, we're not trying to be each other. He's talking about the assignment that is sacred to God. It's to have voices that will represent truth in a time when it is contrary. That's what the prophet, prophetic does. True prophetic doesn't go with what your opinion is. It stays with what God has said. So he, had, he said, bring prophecies and, and let's compare. And his mouth was on the floor. We had never released these prophecies publicly. Some of them we did. And, and we started noticing a pattern and that God was serious. And by the way, do you know how many towers fell that day? Three. Three. The middle one was cut short. Hello. And so people called Kim a false prophet. Now his prophecies are speaking. And he looked at me before he left, and he said these words. He said, Hank, you're going to prophesy things that I'm not permitted because you're carrying the same assignment as I am for this country. Now, listen to this. So he called me in 2000, and I want to say, Brenda, was it in Peru, 2009, 8 or 9, he called me, and he said, Hank, he said, I, we need to pray. God said, call you, we need to pray. So we're praying, and he says, what, he says, what are you hearing? I said, Kim, the Spirit of God says, it's now time to reveal this card. This card... What, what do they call Trump? Trump card. And he said, it's time. And, and, and Kim goes, what are you seeing? I said, Kim, it's, God is saying in the 240th year of America's reign shall begin this clash of two kingdoms. When, this was in 2008-9, Brenda. 2008. Kim says, and he starts prophesying. He says, and in this, and he goes, and then there will be a season where they will say, we have two presidents. What shall we do now? But the one who it is rightfully theirs and the people, shall it be given back to them again. And, and, and then he prophesies that later on in February, I believe it was Seattle, uh, where he talked about two presidents. So for me, this isn't a game. This is God's heart, a 20-some year prophetic journey that I am staying the course. And here's what I want to say to everyone. Listen to me. We are, don't, don't get messed with when you're looking at a debate that, you know, they're, they're mocking us because we prayed that witchcraft would be bound and, and lying spirit would be bound and say, yep, yeah, sure, Trump lost the debate. You know, all the idiots out there that, that are on the, on the left loony side. But here's what they don't realize. The nature of God is to always let things look like they're a certain way to see what you're going to do. That's what he did with Moses. That's right. Exodus 32, the people corrupted themselves. God came down to Moses and he said, and, 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 and Moses stood up for the people in mercy. He said, no, God, what are the people going to say if you don't act? And God changed his mind. And then Moses went down and broke the commandments and God said, get your butt back up here. You wanted me to administer mercy, but you took it out on the people. So God is looking at what we're going to do, and he always acts. I like what Marilyn Hickey always tells me. She says, Hank, God is never on time. He's always last minute. And that's what you have to understand. That's why the Spirit of God said before I came here, tell the people, quit saying, I sure hope so. Be determined in your spirit that you know so what God has said. We are almost at the finish line. We are seeing first, I don't want to go too much longer, because we, I have a word, but I can't release it now. I've got to release it tomorrow night. First Kings 18 is where we're at. Jezebel and her deal, they all cut themselves, prophesied, acted like they were in control. But then there was a covenant man that had an evening sacrifice, and the fire of God fell. Don't forget Isaiah 60. We might have darkness and gross darkness, 
But keep reading verse 3. But I, the Lord, shall arise upon thee. You know what? I heard the Holy Spirit say, remind him of this. You know why I'm also, also confident of something? Is Anthony, Pastor Anthony, was it 2021, Spirit of God? I had so much hate mail. The Spirit of God prophesied, watch Netanyahu. He shall be assigned to us in the earth. For there are two that God said I've placed my hand on, my anointing. Netanyahu and President Trump, and both shall be uh, raised up again, says the living God. People hate mailed me because at that time we had all this stuff going on with Trump. They were trying to throw President uh, or, or Prime Minister Netanyahu in prison. Remember that? Yeah, that's right. Who's back in power? Netanyahu. Thank God. And if God said that in 2021, he's not lying. And, and here's how you know a Tulsi Gabbard, an RFK, and a bullet that only God could have protected is how you know what God is desiring to do in this country. Don't you dare think that our country and we are like grasshoppers. These giants are bred for us and we're going to win. Well, I just really uh, spoke to me when you, you said we have to finish this. Amen. And I'm reminded of, of the prophet when Elisha was dying and, and the king went to him and he said, strike the ground with the arrows. And he hit the ground three times. And the prophet was upset. And he said, you should have hit five or six. And that's always spoken to me. He didn't give him a number. It wasn't like the prophet knew how many times he was supposed to do it. He wasn't looking for a number. He was looking for an attitude. And so he said, look, you don't have a finishing heart. You're going to start this you should have a finishing heart. Well, I know today God has raised up a remnant and an army in America and elsewhere that have a heart to finish this. We're going all the way, all the way, all the way into the fullness of what God says. Amen. Fight, 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 fight. Yeah. Very Pastor quickly, Hank. I just am brought back to an example in Mark chapter, I believe it's six, where the disciples were in a boat. They've been rowing out in the middle for, you know, quite a long time, three miles out. It's dark. It's windy. It says the wind was contrary against them. They started to fear. Jesus begins to move towards the boat. And here's what they thought. They thought he was a ghost. We've got to stop attributing the visitation of Jesus on our nation as always being something evil because we can't discern. He is coming to rescue us, but we've got to call him in his boat, in, in, into our nation like they called him in the boat. So I want to do that real quick. Yeshua! 